Welcome. NOAA has just issued its April of 2018 Global Climate Report. There have been some very interesting developments and I'm going to summarize those developments in this video. It turns out that April was the third warmest April on record, being 0.83 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. We can mark the record warmest and record coldest areas on this map. You can see there's only one record cold area and that was over the central states of the United States and there are a large number of record warm areas spread all around the globe. From this map you can see that there is still a trace of uh, La Nina in the eastern Pacific but it does look as though it's weakening and there'll be more on that later. Now let's take a look at the time histories of these various uh, parts of the planet. We're going to compare first of all land and ocean and that's on the left here and the land was the ninth warmest April on record the ocean was the fourth warmest April on record and those combined to make it the third warmest April overall similarly for the northern and southern hemisphere on the right the southern hemisphere was the second warmest the northern hemisphere was the eighth warmest and therefore globally that combines to become the third warmest what we have here is a plot of the monthly temperature anomaly plotted for the last 140 years. And the remarkable thing about this plot, it shows that April of 2018 was the 400th consecutive month that had temperatures above average. You have to go all the way back to 1984, December, uh, before you come across a month that was below average. That means if you're under 33 years of age, you've never experienced a month that had a below average temperature globally. One way to gather whether the Earth is warming or cooling is to compare the number of record highs to the number of record lows. If those two numbers are about the same, you have a stable situation. However, if there are more record highs, you have a warming planet. If there are more record lows, you have a cooling planet. So let's see how it, the April figures turned out. In April, there were 6,500 record highs and only 1,779 record lows. So that would indicate a strong warming trend. Year to date, we have had 34,158 record highs compared with 25,921 record lows. So again, that would indicate we have a warming planet. Here I've laid out a matrix of the ranking of each month by year over the last five years. And you can see 2018 is falling slightly behind the other four years that are on this matrix. However, whether it stays in that position or overtakes 2014 will depend on how quickly we establish an El Nino, how large it is and how long it lasts. Let's take a look at what the conditions are in the upper atmosphere. This is the so-called satellite data that people put so much stock in. The first layer of the atmosphere that they look at is what's called the lower troposphere. This is a layer from about 0 to 8 kilometers, averaging at about 4 kilometers in altitude. And I look at the results from two groups, UAH and RSS here. They find fairly different numbers for the anomaly, about 0.21 degrees centigrade above the average and 0.15 degrees centigrade above the average, respectively. They rank those the 7th and 11th warmest, respectively. However, they both find a very similar warming trend in this layer of the atmosphere of about 0.13 degrees centigrade per decade. The next layer up is the mid-troposphere, which is average of about 8 to 10 kilometers. They find a very similar anomaly, about 0.13 degrees centigrade, and they rank them 9th and 10th respectively. And again, they find a very similar slope to their data. Uh, again, a warming trend, even in this high level of the atmosphere, of 0 0.08 degrees centigrade per decade. Last but by no means least is the stratosphere. Now this layer of the atmosphere is cooling and they find a, an average of about minus 0.4 degrees centigrade above the long-term average and again they find a very similar sort of slope but this time a cooling slope of 0.24 degrees centigrade per decade and this is exactly the sort of temperature structure that you expect from the climate models. Warmest at the surface where the heat is being exchanged between the land, ocean and air and cooler as you go higher and higher till you get to the stratosphere where you would predict cooling. Let's take a look at what was going on in the United States. 
On the left we have the temperature uh, percentile map and you can see right down the middle of the United States there was a very strong cooling trend whereas the southwest once again is hot. In the precipitation map on the other side you can see the middle part of the country is suffering from uh, drought whereas again the two coasts are getting at least some uh, moisture to uh, liven things up. Let's take a look at the sea ice both in the northern and southern hemispheres. Overall the global sea ice is the second lowest level ever recorded. Uh, that compares with last April. The northern hemisphere the Arctic ice continues to drop away quite rapidly and uh, this last month was the second lowest on record. In the southern hemisphere we have sea ice at its fourth lowest ever. Well what's happened to the El Niño La Niña cycle? At the moment we have what's called ENSO neutral conditions which means we have neither. I want you to compare this map from January of this year with April. So take a look at this area along the equator and note how much blue there is in that area. That's cool water. So now let's go to the April map and compare what that area looks like now. And you can see a lot of that blue has gone away and in fact there's been some incursion of that orange colored material which is hot water into that area. So this La Nina has weakened, in fact has disappeared and we expect continued uh, warming throughout the rest of this year. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on with the solar cycle. Here's the latest data from the Solar Influences Data Center. And you can see we're still slipping elegantly towards solar minimum. But is there a way of estimating when solar minimum will be? Well, we can use the previous cycle to give us some idea of when that will happen. If we draw a line across here and project back to see when solar cycle 23 was at a similar level of activity as we are now, we can see that was in the middle of 2007. Now, as the maximum was in the early part of 2009, that gives a certain time between uh, that period of uh, similar activity and minimum, which if we project forward to the current cycle, would say that solar minimum will be in January of 2020, plus or minus six months. The solar cycle 25 will start just about six months later in earnest. And then the maximum of solar 25 will follow three to six years later. When we'll let, so let's say it's in the middle of 2024. Based on previous cycles, I'm guesstimating that the peak of solar cycle 25 is going to be around about 140. So there's my prediction. You heard it here first. So in summary then, April of 2018 was the third warmest April on record. We've had 400 consecutive months with above average temperatures. We now have ENSO neutral conditions and the warming will therefore continue as we edge towards a new El Nino. And solar minimum is at least 18 months away. Until next time, goodbye.